Hello, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for liver failure in South Africa. So what does the liver actually do? I think we need to understand that before we talk about how it you know, can fail. Well, it does a lot. It produces bile and excretes bile. It excretes bilirubin, cholesterol, hormones, various drugs go through the liver as opposed to the kidney. It does also help with the metabolism of fats, proteins, carbohydrates. It helps activate enzymes, stores glycogen, vitamins, minerals. It's very uh, in instrumental in clotting. So it synthesizes plasma proteins like albumin and clotting factors, and it detoxifies the blood. So what are the reasons a liver can fail over time? Well, <clears throat> there's a very common reason worldwide is from hepatitis A, B, or C. It can really tax the liver and cause it to fail over time. There's also immune system issues like autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cholangitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis. There are various genetic issues, hemochromatosis, Wilson's disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. There's several different types of cancer which can pr pr produce liver failure. And then there's other, you know, uh, chronic alcohol abuse, non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease, and there's overuse of certain medications. So typically the way this works is you end up with chronic inflammation. You know, chronic inflammation causes a lot of issues in the body, but, you know, liver's no different. Then it could lead to scarring of the liver, fibrosis is what that's referred to, and then cirrhosis, and then end-stage liver disease. What are the risk factors? Um, all right, so a lot of these are, you know, changeable lifestyle, heavy alcohol use, um, obesity uh, can be a risk factor, type 2 diabetes, tattoos or body piercings um, can lead to hepatitis, injecting drugs using shared needles can cause hepatitis, uh, blood transfusions before 1992 were not screened as well as, as they could have been, or that technology didn't exist. Uh, exposure to other people's bodily fluids and blood, unprotected sex, exposure to certain chemicals or toxins, and family history. So what are the traditional treatments for liver failure? I'll start off by saying they're not great. Uh, there's various medications like diuretics, which can help uh, get rid of excess fluid, blood pressure medication, um, lifestyle changes such as weight loss for obesity, you know, stopping alcohol or reducing it, supportive care, um, and possibly a liver transplant. The liver is the only organ that can regenerate. Um, it's amazing in that sense. It is the heaviest organ in the body. You can actually remove 70% of your liver and the rest will regenerate the organ. Let's talk about transplant for a moment. Um, before a transplant patient gets on a waiting list, at least here in the United States, they must show proof of funding for 20%. Um, in the United States, 14,000 people on average on the waiting list. The cost of a liver transplant um, is ridiculously high. Um, in the United States, it's over $800,000 and climbing. Um, in South Africa, it's probably you know at least it's, I mean, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you have to come up with 20%, you know, that's a lot of money. The average wait time for a liver transplant in the U.S. is 239 days. There are some significant exclusions, various age groups or, you know, comorbidities. It's, it's very rare for someone over 70 to be offered a liver transplant. So let's go through some research on what stem cell therapy for liver failure uh, can do. Here's a study out of stem cells and translational medicine. Human mesenchymal stem cell transfusion is safe and improves liver function in acute on chronic liver failure. This was a Chinese study 10 years ago, 43 liver failure patients. So 24 received the umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells, 500,000 stem cells per kilogram, three times over you know, months, once a month. 500,000 stem cells per kilogram is a lot. It's not as many as we see in most studies. Um, you know, so if you're 60 kilograms, you're going to get uh, 30 million stem cells, and then another month, 30 million, another month. The survival rates were increased dramatically. Stem cell patients showed increased serum albumin, cholinesterase, prothrombin activity, and their platelet counts increased. 
they had decreased total bilirubin and um, alanine aminotransferase. Um, and the study showed that it was safe. There was no significant adverse events and may serve as a novel therapeutic approach, in this case for hepatitis, hepatitis B, acute on chronic liver failure. Here's a study uh, for mesenchymal stem cells for cirrhosis. Um, cell therapy for cirrhosis has demonstrated that bone marrow stem cells, hematop hematopoietic, and mesenchymal stem cells can improve liver function and deliver beneficial effects in terms of liver regeneration. Uh, it's not really understand why these therapeutic effects occur. There are six things we know that stem cells can do nicely in the body. They can prevent scar tissue, they can improve uh, blood flow, they can promote cellular differentiation, there's a lot of cell-to-cell -cell signaling called paracrine signaling, um, and there's others as well. This is a large amount of studies uh, on this one page. Um, it's interesting, uh, a lot of studies have used bone marrow. You can see where it says cell source, and then there's like three here which used umbilical cord. Um, and quite a few of these use half a million stem cells, um, or half a million stem cells, per, oh actually that is per kilogram. Um, you know, some use more, I don't think any of them use less. Um, you can see in the far right there were no significant side effects. Um, the results in the vast majority of these studies have been fantastic, but as you can see in the sample size, a lot of them are small studies. Eight patients, um, you know, one had 158, that's great. Um, I'll see the umbilical cord one had 43 patients, 20, this is the one we talked about, 24 got the, uh, the cells, um, and that was just an IV therapy. You know, we don't recommend, and our providers do not inject into the hepatic artery um, or intrasplenic or whatnot. Uh, it just increases risk and the results have been no better. Here's one for liver fibrosis. Um, what they saw in this study was hepatocyte-like cell differentiation, immune modulatory activity, trophic factors, which are growth factors, um, antifibrotic, which means reduced scar activities, and antioxidant. So there's a lot of beneficial effects that the mesenchymal stem cells bring to the table which help with liver failure. Um, here's another list of clinical trials uh, around the world. Um, you know, most of these clinical trials don't occur in the United States now. Um, this is China, Egypt, Sweden, Iran, um, and you can see where it says main results. The MELD scores improved in basically all of these studies. Um, creatinine level improved, serobalbumin level, um, a lot of other things. We see this all the time in patients as well. Stem cell transplant for advanced stage liver disorders. Um, this looked at hundreds of studies. It was a meta-analysis where you pull in results of studies. Uh, the stem cell-based interventions provided significant improvements in patients with chronic liver disease. Stem cells played a key role in protecting the liver. Uh, and it, you know, we talked about this, anti-inflammatory, autoimmune suppression, angiogenesis, which is new blood flow, and anti-apoptosis, which is reducing cell death. The studies indicated that stem cells derived paracrine factors, which is cell-to-cell -cell signaling um, as well. All right, here's a study that was very recent. Um, the assessment of mesenchymal stem cells in acute on chronic liver failure and chronic liver disease. Once again, this is a meta-analysis. They pulled in a lot of studies and they looked to see statistically what happened. So this study suggested that mesenchymal stem cells can improve liver function and alleviate clinical symptoms without serious adverse events. It had therapeutic effects on patients with both acute and chronic liver disease and cirrhosis. Um, bone marrow or umbilical cord stem cells were similar in the improvements. In this one, there was a slight difference between peripheral IV versus hepatic arterial injection, but I can tell you right now, if the increased risk with the hepatic arterial injection, it's not worth the risk. So we just stick with IV. All right, in conclusion, many small studies and early clinical trials and our own experience shows that stem cell therapy for liver failure is not only safe, but it's typically very effective. We know that high stem cell numbers are necessary for treatment. You don't have to inject into the hepatic artery or vein. Umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells give fantastic results, just like bone marrow or autologous. I do want to mention, we don't use embryonic stem cells. Nobody should. Those come from aborted fetuses. But past the ethical issues, they're just not safe. They can cause rejection, 
They can cause tumor formation. Um, if anybody suggests this type of treatment, just run away. Um, we use either mesenchymal stem cells or hepato, hem, hematopoietic stem cells from umbilical cord tissue. It's been, we've been doing that for all, close to a decade. It's been very, very safe. We've done over 21,000 procedures um, with really no significant adverse events. So for our treatment programs in South Africa, we have two locations in Johannesburg uh, and Umschlange, which is right next to Durban on the coast. The process is straightforward. It starts with a free confidential phone consultation with a licensed, experienced stem cell provider. Um, we'll assign you a patient concierge representative who will assist you through the process. We'll, you know, we'll get you the quotation, help you with travel logistics, pre and post instructions, um, all of those. Our, the, the ground transportation is free. We'll pick you up from the airport, take you to the clinic and back, um, the hotel. You don't have to worry about that. So our umbilical cord stem cells come from uh, FDA regulated labs in the United States. Uh, it's US, USA technology. We have a pristine safety record at the labs. Uh, FDA quality assurance standards are extremely rigorous and we go above and beyond. These are pure, potent stem cells, growth factors, exosomes, cytokines, secretomes, micro and messenger RNA. We um, are able to provide these as the most cost-effective stem cell clinics in the world because A, we've done so many, and B, we've used our buying power to bring the cost down for patients. So for 100 million stem cells, for instance, it's going to cost you about 7250 US dollars. That's going to be three times that amount in China, Panama, or other countries. We've been featured on a lot of outlets um, over the years. Um, take a lot of pride in the quality um, of our service, uh, the quality of the biologics, the outcomes for our patients. Our patient satisfaction rate year over year is 85%. Um, so start the process today. Visit us online at r3stemcell.com slash south-africa. Uh, that's our website for South Africa. And then give us a call at 27-213-001-831. And we'll get you set up for that free consultation. Thank you so much for watching.